So, chapter one, as I said, I'm going to go through it fairly rapidly because it is such simple material. It's stuff you definitely learned in Chem 1. Okay, so we're going to go relatively quickly here. All right, and the first thing that we need to talk about is just the metric system. Okay, um, what's on this slide? These are your metric prefixes. Um, and what I'm going to expect that you can do is convert back and forth between them. Okay? These are prefixes you can use with any base unit. You could use it with meters, seconds, liters, etc. Okay? So I would be expect I'm expecting you to be able to convert between you know nanoseconds and milliseconds, for example. Okay. Do you need to know every single prefix on this chart? No. And I realize it's next to impossible to see on the PowerPoints that I've given you. But here's the ones that you need to know. I want you to know mega down through nano. Okay. Mega down through nano. Okay. Anything outside of those ranges, if you know it, great. But I doubt you're ever going to see something like, you know, teraseconds or terameters, for example. Okay. But, you know, the metric system, guys, is the system that most of the world uses. The United States doesn't. Our country and Myanmar and Liberia are the only countries in the world that use our system. Call us unique. Okay, SI stands for what was on the previous slide, System Internationale, metric system. Okay, these are just the most common units you're going to see for these various physical quantities. Okay, meters, seconds, our temperatures are most often going to be in Kelvin. Okay, when we get to electrochemistry, we'll see amps, electrical current. Right. All right, let's talk precision and accuracy. Accuracy, guys, means how close is your measurement, because precision and accuracy refers to measurements, how close is your measurement to the true value? So if I hand you some kind of object and it has a mass of exactly 25 grams, you go and mass it on the balance and you get 24.999 grams. Well, that's pretty accurate. You're pretty close to the true value. Precision is a term you can't use with just one measurement. Precision is a term you use when you have multiple measurements because it refers to how close are a series of measurements to each other. Okay, so let me use that example again. So if I've got something that has a true mass of 25 grams, you go and mass it and you get this. The first time you do it, you measure 20.2, then you mass it again and you get 19.9 and you mass it again and you get that. Would you guys say that those numbers are relatively close to each other? Yeah, I would. Those are fairly precise measurements, but are they accurate? No, they're not. So this would be an example of like this kind of situation close together, close to each other, but not on the mark. Okay. This would be a situation where you have good accuracy and precision. This would be poor for both. Okay. All right, everybody's favorite. Let's talk sig figs. Okay. There's basically two rules okay, for deciding how many sig figs something has. The first is if you ha are given a number and you see a decimal point, like you actually see a dot, the rule is 
move your eyes from left to right, and you start counting at the first non-zero number. So this doesn't count, this doesn't count, boom. That's your first significant number, and everything to the right is significant. Same thing with this one. So from left to right, everything here is significant. Now what if I do this? So look at this number here. I'm going to try to squeeze this in as best I can. What if I put a zero there? Is that zero significant, yes or no? Yes, it is, okay? Because everything after that first significant number is significant, okay? The other rule is, what if it doesn't have a decimal point? Then the rule is the opposite, okay? Move your eyes from right to left. Start counting at the first significant number. Boom, 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 there's three sig figs, okay? So those are the two rules. And when we actually get to some calculations, which we're going to do today, first thing we're going to do today, guys, is we're going to do some conversions. Conversion just means you're given some quantity in some unit and you're asked to change it to another unit. Okay. So let's say I give you something that is... 58.1 centimeters in length, and I say, how many inches is that? Okay. In order to do that, <clears throat> you're going to have to use what's called a conversion factor. This is one I would probably commit to memory. Okay. Now here's the deal. Okay. You're converting centimeters to inches. You put the numbers, you crunch the numbers in your calculator, and up comes your answer. How do you know, see what you remember from last year or 10th grade, how do you know how to round your answer here? How do you know how many sig figs your answer should have? Do you remember how to figure that out? Should I look here or here or where? Or here, you're, tell me, yeah. Thank you. The original number, okay? The data or the number or the measurement that's actually printed in the problem. Ladies and gentlemen, you do not ever use conversion factors to help you decide how many sig figs your answer should have. Conversion factors are considered what's called exact numbers. We don't use them for deciding sig figs. You always look at your original number. So I would round my final answer to three sig figs. Okay? And I'll tell you guys, 99.9% .9 of the time in this class, if we're doing a calculation, you're doing either multiplication or division or both, okay? This rule is probably so ingrained in your brain that you don't even think about it anymore. You don't even have to remember this rule exactly, okay? If you're doing multiplication and division, your final answer should be rounded to the fewest number of sig figs. This number has three, this number has two, my final answer should have two. Okay. Most people remember that rule no problem. It's the other one that people always forget. Okay. There are going to be sometimes, not a lot, but sometimes that we're doing addition and subtraction and nobody ever remembers this rule. But you guys are going to remember this rule because you're better than that. Okay? You're not counting sig figs. You're counting numbers after the decimal place. So if I put that in my calculator, here's what comes up. Not counting sig figs. This number has one number after the decimal. This has three. I want to round to the fewest. So just one number after the decimal. Okay. Again, are we going to be adding and subtracting a lot? No, but it's something that you do need to remember. So let's get to the nitty gritty stuff, what we're going to do today. This is why I had you get a calculator. Okay. 
when you're doing conversions, which we're going to be doing a lot during the year, okay, I prefer this method called dimensional analysis. Some people don't like that method. I do. It helps me stay organized. Okay, here's one conversion vector. Here's another. You know, the nice thing about this is I can see exactly how the units are going to cancel out and what unit I'm left with at the end. Okay, but again, just make sure you were listening. If I put all this in my calculator, how many sig figs should my final answer have? Four. I'm only looking here. One, two, three, four. Correct. Let me say a little something about if I was doing this kind of problem. Do I need to show my work? Yes, you do. Okay, on the AP exam and on my tests as well, if this was something in the free response section, okay, you have to show your work. Okay, for example, if you're given a fairly large question that involves a lot of calculations. Let's say the whole question is worth 10 points. Okay, You might get only one of those 10 points for having the correct answer. The other nine points are for how did you get that answer. Okay, So I know a lot of people don't like to show their work, but it, you have to do it. Okay, There's just no getting around it. So, this is a problem for you. Okay. I'm going to introduce it to you. I have given you three different conversion factors. They're, they have units that you are probably not familiar with. Rods, furlongs, these are units of length that are used in the horse racing community. Now, why they get their own set of units, I don't know, but they do. Please don't memorize these. You do not need to know how many rods are in a furlong. Okay? But here's the question. It says the Kentucky Derby race is 1.25 miles. I would like you to do a con three conversions, in fact. How long is this race in rods? That's an ant one answer. Meters and kilometers. Okay? There are other conversion factors besides what's on this slide that will probably help you. Okay? Hint, maybe look a few slides back. All right? But I want you to try it. Try this. Figure it out. If you get stuck, talk with people around you. Go. wherever you are for a second and I want you to look at the first part of this okay solving for, for miles to rods okay when you put the numbers into your calculator the number exactly 400 is what comes up in your calculator can somebody tell me why is it that I absolutely had to put that decimal point there yeah yes, correct yeah, to make it have the right number of sig figs. It needed three sig figs. If I had neglected to put that decimal point there, just 400, the number 400 has how many sig figs? Just one. Okay. So would you lose a point for that? Eh. If this were my test, you'd probably lose like a half a point. Okay. So that, that decimal point is important there. Keep going. So guys, I'm going to put up my work for these set, these last two parts, but I just want to say something that goes for the rest of this year. Whenever I put up my work, just because I did it a certain way does not mean that you have to do it that way, okay? You may have another method. As long as we end up with the same answer and you've shown me your work for how you got there, I'm cool with that, okay? So what I'm going to put up next may not be the way that you chose to go, and that's totally fine.
that's the method I used. Um, I heard a couple of people, you know, asking each other, you know, how many meters are in a mile? I have no idea. Okay, so I chose to go a different way. Um, yeah. Questions, comments, concerns? Okay. So I'm actually going to stop here.